In 1942, U.S. pilots were brought into Walla Walla Airfield to train in the heavy bombers, the B-17, before shipping out to England. Among those allotted to train at Walla Walla was none other than the captain of the famous Memphis Belle, Robert K. Morgan. After dispute amongst the crew, he finally convinced them to name their ship after his fiance at the time, a beautiful Southern Belle, Margaret K. Polk from Memphis, Tennessee. On May 17, 1943, the crew of the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress, Memphis Bell, successfully completed their 25th and final mission. But not before, first going through hell. But today, it's a different world. The war ended, life moved on, and we get to look back at the legacy and the legends of these people who fought for the freedom of our country and for the world. It's too windy. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a little wind. Veterans still keep these stories alive today. The Flying Legends of Victory Tour are spreading awareness to folks all around the country of the great importance and significance the B-17 and the stories of the crew who operated this plane had during the war. Space. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is like getting into a submarine. Right? <laughs> you can all the oh, way wow. through the plane. Whoa. After squeezing through the door, it's no doubt it's a tight fit with limited room for crawling around. Oxygen tanks, cable wires, and all kinds of machinery are carefully stored and organized here. With one or two gunners in the front, the bombardier, and a navigator slash radio operator, the front crew had a tremendous responsibility of keeping the plane on course, the front borders safe, and releasing the bombs directly over the target area. The crawl space connects the nose of the plane where the gunman and navigator were stationed to the pilot and co-pilot seat. Is that another gunner up there? Nice. From there it's a tight walk through the bomb bay doors to the rest of the crew towards the back. After touring this plane, you can't help but be amazed by the incredible engineering and obstacles they had to go through in order for it to be built. And then crossing over here, through the other side. Oh wow, and it just opens up. Crazy. Come to Bombay, and then this here's the navigation, communication. Oh, we get into the back part of the plane where there's more guns. Here's the turret. It's on there. <laughs> he looks like he's getting ready to shoot. Behind the gun, it's not hard to believe what it must have been like for those guys. The first half of the mission is over. The easy half. Now to get home.
200 to 250,000 total people. How many were killed in action? Huh? 26,000 were killed in action. How many became POWs? So 54,000 young men had breakfast that morning, didn't come home that evening. And that was mostly in 42, 43, 44. You know, later on is when they added huge, huge forces. They had 1,000 plane raids on you know, late 44, 45. Uh, 42, 43, 100 planes, you know, etc. Uh, so it was... It was the toughest place to serve in the U.S. Armed Forces. They lost more people in the 8th Air Force alone, killed in action in the Marine Corps in all the battles of World War II. That's not real, though. No. Wow. So the airplane's not pressurized, so we, we do not fly up 10,500 feet. But the people that flew in these airplanes yeah. in World War II, they flew at about 28,000 feet. Wow. It was, it was minus, minus 60 degrees. <laughs> but you know when your ship goes out on a mission, you may never see it again. So you do your work as well as it can be done, perfectly. Because you wouldn't want anything to go wrong that would be your fault. Oh, these look like chairs. <laughs> Super cool. Anyways, it's the gun in the back. Chairs right there. It's probably the kind of thing that you would do. This is super cool. Don't let that face scare you. All it is is a small, healthy mannequin filling the place to show where the tail gunner would have sit back during that time. Field McChesney, radio operator 369er, Squadron 306, Bomb Group, shot down on February 14, 1945, over Dresden, Germany. This is one of hundreds of signatures and stories that still reside in marker permanently written on the plane's bay doors. In memory of the 405,399 American soldiers who laid down their lives for our country and for freedom.
forget what you said I'm the one that you want Was it all in my head? Don't give up on me, babe No, I fell into the Memphis Bell was in was trained here in Walla Walla just before it went to uh, Europe. Wow. And Memphis Bell was named after uh, the girlfriend of the pilot of that airplane. That pilot met the girl from Memphis in Walla Walla. She was visiting a friend in Walla Walla. And uh, they, uh, you know, she was his, uh, you know, lady friend when he went to combat. So, he had to lobby his crew to get the airplane named after her. Oh, that's you know, funny. Like that. But the guy ended up not marrying her. He, I think he was married five or six times. Oh. So, <laughs> but anyway, that's the story. Wall Wall was very much linked with the Memphis Bell. Wow. <laughs> and it was uh, sent back to the U.S. with a crew. And they toured around the country uh, on a war bond, on a war bond, you know, uh, campaign 